going to begin another lesson, a holiday lesson painting poinsettias. So here you have what the final project could look like. And right here, you're going to see the poinsettia that I purchased. I want you to notice how the petals of the poinsettia come out from very small and how they overlay. I want you to notice the deep darkness of the color reds and um, the patterns, how it works. The way we're going to be creating this painting, we're going to paint the entire painting with just two colors. They are complementary colors. What I mean by complementary colors is, is that they are across from each other on the color, color wheel. The red is across from the green. Complementary colors dull each other. It's the way I'm going to darken my red to make my shadows is by adding green to it and vice versa. I will dull my green by adding red. The only time you will use another color in this lesson is at the very end, I will allow you to have yellow to do the center of the flower. So let's begin. The first thing you're going to do is draw out your composition and everything that we learned so far, which is the rule of thirds. I want you to consider your hot points on the paper and make a nice composition. Also keep in mind your negative space and your positive space, making sure that it creates great balance and both spaces are interesting. Once you get that done, then the next step would be to paint the entire painting in all red. Now don't look at this right here because I began for the sake of time, but it's gonna be just solid red. So at this point, all you will see on your picture is your positive space being completely blank red and your negative space will be white. We're going to begin painting with using just two colors. So I'm going to add red to my palette and I'm gonna dip my brush in very gently without swirling some green. This is just solid red. I will begin um, by finishing up this area. When you add green to your red, you get a darker green. And this darker green is much more pleasing than adding um, black to it. Black dulls the color. Red, when you use a complementary color, the color across the color wheel, it actually dulls it to a darker color without muddying the color. And I don't want a muddy, dark black red. I just want a red that is, um, is deeper and richer. And that's going to be created by how much green I put in here. The more green I add, the darker. So let me do it on this section since I'd already began here. If I were to look at this flower, I would start at the top and this little petals here, I would shadow behind it. By putting the dark behind the lighter color, now that's my light. So um, I continue. I want this leaf or petal to be on top, so then I recreate a shadow behind it. And I'm going to create more of a shadow behind this one. And I'm just going to work on this one petal because I'm going to show you the finished product. As you can see, I could put the stems out. There we go. And I'm just going to work developing the shadows. If this one is on top, I cast the shadow here. I'm going to add some more green because I want a really dark shadow here, so I would add more green to my red. There is a point, I'm going to show you one more thing before I stop, is if I put a green leaf here, I could add more red to it. Let me wash my brush a speck. There we go. So I have a nice dark red-green because some of these leaves you can see here have red and green in it. So I achieved just the right color on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move back and then see what I'm talking about on my final product. You can see that my lightest red was created by just strictly having the straight red and the shadows of the red and green were put behind it until I developed the whole painting. So I would like you to, um, with an 18 by 12 piece of white paper, first begin with your sketch then color in completely red, and then go ahead and develop the flower. I hope you have fun.